Hey everyone, welcome to another Goodie Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. We have here the Amazon Kindle Voyage versus the Barnes & Noble Nook Lolite Plus. Both the Z readers are current generation and you can see from just the design that both of the screens are flush with the bezel and they both have a capacitive touchscreen yeah. display. They both have the same resolution, 1440 by 1080. So you get full HD and Ink Carta is the e-paper technology that is being employed here. Mm -hmm. uh, they both have like the same amount of memory, the uh, same processor. Uh, the Nook has a bit of a limitations when it comes to memory. It has two gigs of reserved content for Nook purchases and then two gigs for sideloaded content, whereas all the Kindle Voyage memory could be allocated to either sideloaded content or stuff that you purchase from Amazon. So looking at the hardware, the Kindle it kind of, I mean, it's just another black e-reader, but it has its own little features. Like it has the page turn lines, back buttons there. Everything's uh, vibrated, um, f uh, vibration feedback. The back has a magnesium infused plastic with nice angular design, a flush power button, and a piano finish top with a piano finish embossed Amazon logo. The micro USB port is at the bottom, nothing on any of the sides or the top. So it's a super clean looking e-reader. The Barnes & Noble Nook has these little bumpy X's all over the device. It's a um, design feature. You can see close-ups on our unboxing video. Flush screen and bezel. You have a wraparound metallic um, kind of pink copper color. I don't know why they chose that, but it's a decent material at least. Power um, micro USB on the bottom and power button on the left. So it's definitely looking like the Nook is breaking the mold of the traditional cookie cutter black e-readers like this Kobo here. So we have the stores loaded up on both of the e-readers. Both of these companies approach selling ebooks in different ways. Amazon, it's they try to fit more stuff on screen at any single time. And they do try to really promote services such as Kindle Singles, Kindle Unlimited, their unlimited ebook subscription program, editor's picks, things like that. With Barnes Noble, they make a better use of screen real estate here and they rely on arrows and you can see that everything's loading up pretty quickly. They have cur curated sections here, Harlequin, Quintessentials, International Intrigue, Romance in the Past, etc. This all changes, whereas with Amazon, it tends not to change, you know, their bestseller category is fairly consistent. The only thing that really changes are the books contained within. Uh, you can see things that are recommended for you based on past purchases. You could look recommendations and all that type of stuff. What I like about Nook is that they have like things like Nook Recommends, which is basically like their editor's picks. But I like they have a dedicated area for books that are coming soon. And this is something that Amazon doesn't have. Amazon takes pre-orders for books, but they don't put a priority on placing pre-orders. And I, th I like this because between um, Barnes & Noble's new program here, Readouts, that they really put a heavy emphasis on promoting books that aren't out yet and building hype in advance. So you could check out a book, see what the release date is, make a buying decision. We have two eBooks here. They're never gonna look exactly the same as because they're completely different formats on completely different devices, but we'll show that when we augment the text for you. So you can long press. You have things like add note, We'll look at the keyboards now. Kindle offers a little bit of shading on the south uh, region of the key of each key to give it some depth. Um, it's very gray on gray looking keyboard here, so it's not the greatest on the Barnes and Noble. Kindle is actually a lot more responsive. You can see how it registers <laughs> almost all of my quickly taps, whereas the Nook captured one. So the Nook's um, ability to keep up when you're typing is very poor. We also have um, some things like making highlights. We have shares. So you can share to uh, Goodreads, Facebook, Twitter, whereas on the Nook, you only have Facebook. Why are you not going to share that quote? Yeah, man. It was it's such a begging a from begging astounding. You know, it's like it. all of our readers might like that. 
you have search, but you can only search in book with the Nook. You can search all text, the Kindle store, and this book with the Amazon Kindle. You also have more, and this allows you to do translations. Translations is a tremendous feature because you can box a whole bunch of text, press this, go to translation, and translate any language to any language you see on this drop down, even things like Finnish and traditional Chinese, which not a lot of ebooks come in, so really breaks down the barriers of. Yeah. Uh, of e-reading. And it really makes the voyage more accessible to an international audience. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at some of the things that we can do with text. We'll press the little double A button, same on this, if it will register my press. There we go. So you can do things like change the text up and down, everything changes live, margins and line spacing as well. All of that stuff changes as you go. The Barnes & Noble also has publisher's defaults. If you get confused and you just say, you know what, forget it, just want to read it the way the publisher intended, that is indeed the way it's going to look. So this is the Dungeons & Dragons Monsters Manual. We use this because it's a good mix of pictures and text. The Barnes & Noble is very poor when it comes to PDFs. There's no way to expand it. There's no way to zoom in. There's no settings whatsoever to do any of that. The Kindle has full pinch and zoom and navigation capabilities and you can see where you are via the top thumbnail there. Once you let go, everything loads. You can double tap to get out. You can long press just as you can on the Barnes & Noble. However, on the Barnes & Noble you can't zoom in on anything so you can't even really see what you're long pressing and long presses work few and far between. So you see there, it didn't register. I tried it again, it overlapped. So there we go, we can make notes, can't share it, you can highlight. But the thing about the Kindle is that when you box the text, you can essentially box as much as you want, go here, and you can still translate. So we've translated the Monsters Manual from English to any language you see on the drop down. In a matter of seconds, we have Chinese. Worlds above the capabilities of the Barnes & Noble. Both of the screens are at the same illumination levels. Right off the bat, the Voyage has, the screen is more white at, on the highest settings, whereas with Barnes & Noble, it's, it has some blue tinges, but it's no slouch either. But the, the Kindle Bar Nut has a brighter and whiter screen, which makes the text pop. Whereas with the text on the Barnes & Noble here, you can see that it's, it's, it's uh, kind of like saturated a little bit. The Kindle has always been good for white on black. The Barnes & Noble has been the absolute worst glow light ever since they basically invented the glow light on the Simple Touch. Look how washed out it is. Look at the puffing up top where they put the LEDs. And they're always putting their LEDs in the wrong place. They're always putting it in, the, in a different place than everyone else. Just look at them side by side. Look how the Kindle has near perfection on all corners, minus a little bit of graying where the LEDs are. There's a different tinge to the screen, it's not as bright, it's not as good contrast, it's just the Kindle Voyage has been the king of... The, the Paperwhite Voyage has been the king of glow lights ever since they started coming out with it. In the end, the Amazon Kindle Voyage is $199, and the Barnes & Noble Nook Glow Light Plus is $129. Mm -hmm. With the higher money that you're paying out for the voyage, it's worth it. Way worth it. If you're the type of person that has used an e-reader over the years or just likes the conceptual idea of a dedicated device that's lightweight, that has a light, that will allow you to have thousands of books and to be able to carry it with you everywhere, E-readers are the choice for serious readers. They're not for people who want multi-purpose tablets like iPads or smartphones and to instant message people with Line or WhatsApp. These are designed for, to excel at reading, to be easy on the eyes, and I think that the Voyage blows the Nook Light out of the water.